You didn't need to be a Celtics fan last spring to root for Isaiah Thomas. As David Aldridge asked the question, we, we were all wondering, how, how is Isaiah able to play at such a dominant level just days after his sister died tragically? And coming up, it's a relationship with a city that has Kenny Smith a bit confused. We'll get to his comments, but you look at this roster, which leaves, again, Brad Stevens with endless possibilities of roster rotations. But let's start with Kyrie Irving. Coach, is Kyrie Irving capable now of being the best player on the best team? Is he ready for that role in Boston? You think so. You would think that with the experience he's had going to consecutive finals the way he's had and playing alongside the best player in the game, LeBron James, that you would take from that. But there's a lot that goes with that. It goes to the maturity level of Kyrie. Uh, will that get better than what it's been in the past? And uh, how will he be accepted by the Celtic family? Because that's one I think I've, it will really be different for him. Uh, Cleveland talked a lot about the family, but I'm not really sure how close okay, they all were. The Celtics seem to really be a close-knit group, and it, it starts with the head coach really emphasizing that and kind of forcing that uh, upon them. So now how will Kyrie fit in with that group? How will they accept him? And I would think Al Horford becomes a very important piece as far as mm. gathering all these young guys and saying, like, uh, here's what we're going to get done now. I think Kyrie's being absorbed into the culture of the Boston Celtics in a way that'll be new to him in his NBA career. He's Think about when he got drafted, Cleveland was his show until LeBron came back. It was his kingdom to rule. You know, I mean, a coach was bounced on his watch before LeBron came back and Mike Brown. So much transpired, you know, in his first years without LeBron, and then you come back and go through the rush of three straight trips to the finals and what that means, playing to that last day of the season, three years in a row, what you learn doing that, how you learn from a guy like LeBron who's been through so much more in his career than Kyrie had been to this point. So I think you take the lessons you've learned, the things you, you maybe think you should do, some of the things maybe that you shouldn't, if, if you're Kyrie. Like if I'm gonna lead my own team, I don't wanna lead in this manner or this way. But you have to be very careful that you allow yourself to be embraced and, and folded into that culture in Boston because it does exist. Yeah. Seku, we don't want to forget about the Cleveland aspect of this, and we'll do that in a moment. But Kyrie Irving Jordan joining uh, Gordon Hayward, Al Horford, is, is this now in your mind the best roster, in, at the very least, in the Eastern Conference? No. Um, <clears throat> I, think, I think as long as LeBron is in Cleveland with another all-star, like Kevin Love, another all-star like Isaiah Thomas. For the time being, they remain the powerhouse roster in Eastern Conference. Not just that. So many of Boston's other pieces are in the formative stages of their careers. LeBron's got seasoned vets surrounding him. We, you know, we forget that he prefers to have veteran guys as opposed to young guys that are still developing. I think that gives Cleveland a slight edge right now.